welcome to the stream. certain mission to come in so I'll be doing a bit of careering a little bit of other stuff comes along hopefully we'll get that FTL unlocked There's a lot of stuff going on when you're streaming. A lot, a lot of stuff. Your ship has been delivered to the following landing pad. happened to the to the uh, stream there it looks very weird it's happened because I changed the 
resolution. Well, that's pretty annoying. I'll, uh, we're going to stop the stream and we'll start it again. Stop the screen. Start it again. I'll just. Okay, I think it's uh, streaming again. Hi, welcome back. If anyone's watching. Aegis combat assist activated. Just to check and see if that is now given the whole picture. Still not, is it? Oh man, what's going on? Why is YouTube only showing a quarter of the screen now? Uh, you know what? I'm going to go back to 720p. That's what we're going to do. Seriously, hope this fixes it, otherwise, you know, you've already, you've already ruined my YouTube career now. <laughs> yeah, career. Yeah, right. Yeah. The guy with zero viewers, zero followers. Just checking to see if it has indeed fixed the problem, waiting for it to catch up on the live stream there. It's quite a long delay, to be honest. Oh, that looks better. Okay then, let's get on with this. Yeah, that looks 720p. It looks really ugly now. But oh well. size one ship or whatever it is. It takes quite a while to get there. Quantum travel initiate Just checking out the old dashboard and seeing if I need to make any changes there. Stream is uh, there. We go. It is actually playing for me now. Fantastic. sound in the uh, in the background there but it won't do it oh well 
I just want to use the uh, stream editor here. with the team. Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Calling All Devs, our weekly Q&A series right to questions from you, the star citizen backer, and post them directly to the developers. Joining us on the show this week, we go back to Calling All Devs All-Star, Mr. Dan Truck, with a question about NPCs. Dan, how you doing, man? Hey, Jared. All good. You? Yeah, I'm good to you. I was, it's, I almost had something other than my normal phrase and I lost it. Let's just get right to it. Um, I'm going to have to, like, tape a little bit closer to those ones. Can't respond to people as we don't do things like that. I'm like Spock in Star Trek IV. How do you feel? How, like, I don't know how to answer the question. All right. Joining on. Uh, joining on. Joining. Jeez. Let's try this again. Will my NPCs walk around on board? Or does a turret gunner always sit in his tower? A doctor always stay in his medical practice? Chris once said that NPCs must eat and drink. Is this still the plan? Uh, it's definitely still the plan. Um, each NPC will have a schedule. They will have a schedule that says when they're on duty, when they're not on duty, when they will practice at their at their turret. So let, let's take the, the turret example for a second. Uh, I am expecting a turret gunner to not spend all this time in a turret. He needs to eat, he needs to shower, he needs to sleep. He will go through his entire life cycle. He will have some exercise time uh, uh, where he's at the station. There will be, for example, if you have, let's say you have six turret gunners. Mm -hmm. There will be, a few of them will always be at the station and they'll have a rotation. So one of them will sleep between these hours while the other is at the turret, while the next one is eating and doing R&R &R stuff. Once the ship goes into combat uh, you will uh, have all their guys all the guys switch schedule and they'll they'll switch to their combat schedule rather than their out of combat sch schedule and there as soon as they switch to combat schedule whether they were eating uh, being on the toilet or whatever they will leave that they will run all the way to to their turret and man the station gotcha. are you are you talking about uh, like a, like a like a ship in Squadron Forty Two. Are you talking about like a like a player ship? You said six turrets. So let's say ha a hammerhead so here. We're we're talking a ship in PU where where you actually will uh, hire a crew to man your station. Because let's say today your friends are not online and you just want to have some fun. You will be you will have your NPC crew that you hire and raise and train and all the lovely stuff, and they will have a a, a schedule. What you can do as uh, the owner of the ship and the captain, you can say, yeah, you're always on red alert. Then everyone will be at the stations. What that will do, it will cause their morale to drop if you keep them always at the station. They'll go hungry, which again drops morale. They'll not be happy. Their performance will decrease. So it's up to you how you want to do it. If you want to, want to always keep them on red alert because you know stuff is about to happen, fair enough. But at some point, you have to let them do their stuff. And if they don't get enough sleep, sleep they get cranky and all this lovely stuff. All right. What's that happening? Soon. <laughs> Why are you asking? Yeah. Uh, uh, keep an eye on the public roadmap for when uh, uh, AI subsumption and interactions, like AI crew and stuff, you know, are coming, making their way towards the stars. Uh, that's a good time. To remember. I asked the I asked the question, but it's a good time to remind folks that we built an entire public roadmap to answer all when related questions to the best of our abilities for a year out. So uh, when you have a when, when related question, always check that roadmap to get the best idea that, that we have about when something will make its way into Star Citizen. All right, Dan, I'll let you go. Thanks so much, man. Well, thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, thanks so much, Dan. Now we're moving on to Chad McKinney in our Los Angeles studio for a question about ship settings persistence. Chad, how you doing, man? Hey, doing well. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, well, you know, we're in the same office. It's, we see each other at lunch occasionally. Yeah. You want to get cheesesteak truck today? 
Maybe. <laughs> All right. All right. Question from the backers. Voted on by the backers says, what are the plans for ship configuration persistence? I'd like to keep my settings like selected MFDs, weapons groups, selected countermeasures, countermeasures. Wow. Module power settings, stealth configuration, state of headlines, basically all the ship settings. They want to, they want those to persist between the times where they log out and log back in. Uh, what do we got? Uh, that's a you know a good question. I think that it it gets that kind of this desire from the player base to have a more continuous kind of player experience. Um, uh, the fundamental systems to get this done uh, are, are exist. There's basically two ways that you can do this. You can either one uh, locally persist them, so that means we're effectively writing these in some way to some file on disk, and then if you go into the game, out and out, in and out, whatever, uh, they're going to be there, but if you change machines, then at that point you would lose all of your settings. Uh, an alternative is actually that we persist them into your player account and the persistence database, and uh, in that way, actually, if you change machines, then uh, it would actually travel with you, which would be maybe useful for some people. Um, but both of those systems, in order, um, both saving things to disk and persisting them in a, the database um, exist. We have uh, ways for game code to have access to them, to be able to come up with a set of what we call persistent variables and, and persist them as across sessions. And so really, uh, at this point, the, the fundamental systems are there. It's up to each individual team, uh, each individual feature owner uh, to, to take a look at what they have and try to figure out what they think is worth persisting and what they have time to do, what the priority for all of it is. So all of this could be done. Um, there is, uh, you shouldn't underestimate the amount of work that UI is. So, you know, we may need to maybe expose some custom interface for setting or updating these things, or maybe somehow in game, you know, we like to do that a lot. Um, but fundamental like i said the fundamental systems are there and now it's just kind of up to the individual teams to kind of decide for themselves the priority and and whether or not they want to persist in an individual thing in the game right and right and to uh answer the question of whether we're going to be able to do it or whether we're going to do it and stuff like that uh would require a call to each of those individual teams yes. I, I went to you because you would talk about the tech uh in, in, in general, uh, it's there. It's just some. It's just something that our individual teams have to prioritize. And uh, who knows? Maybe the, it, keep an eye on the roadmap. I'm going to say that a lot throughout the course. Of the, <laughs> I have, have said that a lot throughout the course of the yeah. show. When you, when you want to see what's coming next and what uh, that's what the uh, public roadmap is for. Uh, but hopefully, it's it's a it's a uh, it's a gameplay feature I want. Uh, yeah. It's a gameplay feature. I think many people want. I don't think there's anybody. I don't think the the other side of that argument. Oh no, we shouldn't have settings persistence. Right. I don't think they have much of a leg to stand on. Uh, <laughs> so so I well I can't sit here and absolutely commit that it will happen. Uh, I, I I I I think I think the uh, chances are in our favor. So yeah. All right, all right Chad, cool. I want to let you go, man. Thanks so much. Good to hear from you. All right, take care. All right, thanks so much. Now, finally, for our last call of the week, we are going to Kirk Tomei with a question that I know it's close to the heart of little Terrapin out there. Kirk, how you doing, man? Hey, good, Jared. Uh, we got a question. It uh, comes up uh, for, for with a lot of ships, uh, but most recently and perhaps most uh, comically, it's come up with a series of little Terrapin uh, cartoons. Uh, uh, it has to do with that are wonderfully done. <laughs> I know they've made it. They've made their way to a couple desktops uh, here in the studio. Uh, seat height. But let's just talk about adjusting the seat height. You know, we'll, we'll find we'll ask about the terrapin specifically in a bit. But let's talk about the process of adjusting seat heights and 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 why this becomes an issue to begin with. What, what's the challenge here? Sure. Uh, well, um, I guess I can uh, talk about the history of why uh, the seat the positions are where they are, and specifically um, why the geom uh, geometry around the, uh, the seat and uh, your your viewing. Uh, like your basic view area from where you see the cockpit are. So the, there's a big emphasis on being able to see uh, uh, four MFDs on the screen. Um, that emphasis has been uh, has been you know, uh, reduced slightly, but you still need at least two uh, MFDs that show you pretty vital information at all times. Um, I think we maybe push the uh, limit to quite a bit in ships like uh, the Cutlass, where you see almost the entire dashboard does take quite a bit of room. Um, on your, uh, you know, as far as like your, your viewing screen space, um, 
And uh, so that's that's you know why the, the viewing angles are where they are at the moment. Now, uh, I know there is a a request to uh, push those seat uh, angles up, and um, ultimately we'd love to do that. And uh, the best way to do this would be to actually incorporate some actual like height adjustment that is um, that is uh, you know, optional for the player. Let the player choose whatever height they want. Um, fortunately, there's, there's quite a few challenges in doing that. It's not si as simple as simply adjusting the, the height of the feet itself. So I was going to try to lower my chair just to show you how simple it was, <laughs> and I can't find the lever to do it. So I failed it. Uh, continue. Continue. Cool. Anyway, uh, so uh, there there are some challenges with that. Um, so one of them is uh, so uh, the, the HUD in the ships is actually uh, physically placed in the cockpit seat. So we need some way to actually transfer uh, it so that the HUD, um, especially your, your fly club that's directly in front of you, corresponds to your uh, your actual height so that it's in the same position on the screen when you do change the heights. Um, and that's just tech that we need to implement um, in order to get that to happen because right now it, it's literally plastered in the ship. Um, so we need to, some way to uh, make it uh, dynamic and adjust to your, to your lens. Uh, another issue that we have is uh, that um, the, uh, a lot of times the things that would need to be also adjusted with the, uh, the, the seat height, which is namely like your controls, right? So the, the IK, is, it's, it's uh, attached to the dashboard that's in the cockpit. Um, and so we need to make some uh, physical, you know, some geo changes to uh, accommodate for not only the IK because you know you look ridiculous if your hands went so far down that that uh, you you just look terrible like driving the ship right, um, and so uh, that would be necessary for any of the ships we we change in that way. Uh, another uh, the probably the most major one is that uh, animations would have to be changed, um, and that's a challenge because uh, while a lot of our ships do share uh, a templated set of animations for getting in and out of the seats um, and this is especially useful for the single sh uh, the single seat uh, fighters that we have because typically the uh, the animation for getting in and out of the seat actually is tied to getting in and out of the ship itself um, but uh, we need to uh, adjust those across the board and that, that's, that's kind of a tremendous undertaking. Um, and because they're shared, uh, it causes uh, an issue uh, that, well, for the weird part is so, if we have ships that do share that type of animation, um, it means we can't kind of piecemeal uh, this change across, across uh, individual ships. Uh, if we break the animation to, and then fix the geo to what's in one ship, then any other ship that we have that uh, uh, that shares that template uh, also has to be done, and has to be done, you know, before we, we ship a build, uh, so that we just don't have uh, one nice ship and a complete boat. What one of the ways that we make a game at this size and scope possible is through the use of common elements. But this common elements at the same time make quantum sweeping make small changes into sweeping changes because they have to now affect uh, so much more than just. Right. Yeah. So um, I think that we're, these are these are issues that are all solvable. Just take time. And uh, I think the person I think the, the, the issue that is going to be the most challenging is uh, getting the UI to settle correctly because we can probably fudge like the you know, the heights of the, of the seats and the IK and the animations pretty pretty well without any new tech. But uh, the uh, transferring the ship HUD to uh, be dynamic is is going to be something that uh, is going to be a, uh, a pretty big tech debt. Yeah, uh, UI is usually uh, I don't want to say it's the it's the it's the thing that holds us back, but UI is the one department that touches every single aspect of Star yeah. Citizen. So it's they're obviously very taxed. So we are, we are often. Uh, uh, having to wait for UI for for this feature or that feature, and why doesn't IK just fix everything, Kirk? I thought IK was the silver bullet that just made everything possible. Well, I mean it does, but it it won't. Uh, so you know, IK will allow you to move things like final positions of hands and feet, but it won't allow you to make them not look ridiculous, right? So 
if it's uh, if it's a small nudge, sure, that that'll, that'll totally work. But you know, if you want to move the, the character, say, uh, like you know, half a meter or something like that, there's just absolutely no way we can do that without completely reworking the cockpit. All right, Kirk. Well, I think that answers it. Uh, actually, the last question: uh, Any specific information about the Terrapin seat uh, for for Little Terrapin? Anything? We Quantum say? travel initiated. No, 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 no. I tried, guys. It doesn't, it doesn't always happen. All keep right, those, thank. Keep those comments coming. <laughs> All right, thanks so much, Kirk. I'll let you go. All right, take it. Quantum travel that does it for this week's show. A special thanks to Dan Truffman, Chad McKinney, and of course Kirk Tomei for taking their time to be here on the show with us this week. Remember, uh, you, I would normally this is actually normally where I would say you can submit your questions, but we're we're done for the year. Uh, we've got we've got only one more show next week before we're done with the year. We've already got the questions taken, and then I am on uh, uh, vacation in January. So we're not going to see another Calling All Devs for, 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 for a little bit, but it will return in 2019. We'll throw up a new thread when we're ready to start uh, bringing these things together. So, uh, yeah. You don't have to do anything this week. Just watch next week's show. Easy, huh? For Calling All Devs, I'm Content Manager for Global Video Production, Jared Huckabee. And I'll see you next week, everybody. Thanks for watching. For the latest and greatest in Star Citizen and Squadron 42, you can subscribe to our channel or you can check out some of the other shows. And you can also head to our website at www.robertsspaceindustries.com. Thank you very much for watching. Hydrogen fuel at 100%. Quantum travel initiated. Quantum travel complete. Travel complete. Hydrogen fuel at one hundred per cent. Quantum travel initiated. Quantum travel.
Landing gear deployed. Still don't know how I'm supposed to have uh, sound in the background. See where I was going. But no. What we see before is just dropping. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I dropped a pack of drugs from my uh, previous mission. <laughs> I 
should be able to orbit the camera around the little uh, avatar there, but it's just not. Come on. Let's go have a little view. It should not be this difficult, honestly. Please, guys, sort it out. Why, you know, never flipping managed to unlock unlock it this way. Oh, come on, you peak. You know, I suppose uh, floating around in space is kind of difficult. It's, you know, it takes some hours to do things in uh, on NASA, doesn't it? But Reappeared, fantastic. Why is it? Why is is not, you know, what I had in mind. I seem to be unable to move whatsoever. Ah, this is like my fifth attempt at this mission. <laughs> I just want to earn it some extra money. Come on, man. That's the end, end of my first YouTube attempt to do the FTL mission. Absolutely scuffered by the game. It's embarrassing, really. This has never happened before. Well, not for about a year, anyway. 
So I can't move. I do have the box, which is, you know, something. Shame uh, I had to travel all the way over here. Please, 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 SIG developers, fix that EVA into the ship. What's so difficult? Uh, go on then, make an actual video then, why not? Reply with a video, please, and tell me what's so difficult about making this bloke float into the ship with a box. You know, you could have, uh, developers could make, like, invisible to us, but, but like, little steps that the animation, the step animation will just kick into, and then we'll have the ability just to walk up the steps. You've got the uh, imaginary water for the dragonfly. Well, let's have imaginary steps to sort this problem out. Thanks very much. Anyway, I'm going to uh, end the stream there. Uh, thanks for watching. If anybody did watch, uh, you've made a valiant effort, and I think I have as too. Oh well, if you like the uh, way of stream, follow me, and I'll catch you again.